Chemistry provides an exciting method for exploring the endless frontiers of science. It involves close observation of natural phenomena. It requires quantitative measurement and use of the resulting data. It involves continually searching for regularities and wondering why the regularities exist. The chemical education material study is investigating means of developing as effective a course in secondary school chemistry as possible. The grant funds come from the National Science Foundation to the University of California at Berkeley and Harvey Mudd College at Claremont, California. The chairman of the study is Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. I believe that it's the quality and content of our educational system which will be the uh, critical factors in determining our future and uh, determining the outcome of the uh, crucial international struggle in which we're engaged. It is what we do in the classroom and the library and the laboratory that will be decisive in this international struggle. And it's the recognition of these facts that has led to uh, a re-examination of our entire uh, educational system. And I believe that the proper place to start is in the high school. I know uh, that it was in the high school in my own case uh, that uh, I first became interested uh, in science. It was in my high school chemistry class, as a matter of fact. I believe we need to have improvements in other parts of our educational uh, system, in the elementary school and even in the colleges and universities. But I think that uh, these can follow after we've made the needed improvement in the key part, uh, the high school system. And uh, these are the reasons uh, that I, as a chemist, busy as I am, uh, undertook the chairmanship of the high school curriculum improvement study in chemistry, uh, sponsored by the National Science Foundation, known as the Chemical Education Material Study, or the CHEM study for short. And I must confess also that as the father of six children, I wanted to uh, be sure that I was doing what I could uh, to be certain that they would have an adequate uh, course in uh, chemistry uh, when they reach high school. Uh, for I found upon looking over the content of the uh, typical high school chemistry course uh, that it was uh, simply out of touch with modern chemistry. Uh, the uh, typical course has not caught up with the modern theory and contains uh, uh, mainly uh, descriptive uh, material and qualitative discussion. Uh, also, the high school chemistry course uh, in general, and unfortunately, has drawn away from the laboratory. And this is very unfortunate uh, for chemistry is basically a laboratory science. It's based upon experiment. I think that one of the most important developments is the fact that professional scientists, including university professors, are uh, working with high school teachers uh, to help them in their important task. This is a set on which we're making one of our chem study motion pictures, and I'm Art Campbell. We'd like to use this film to show you some of the activities of the study and some of the people involved in them. We're involved primarily in preparing materials for use in a secondary school course in chemistry. Text, laboratory manual, teacher's guide, experiments for use in lecture, some special equipment for the laboratory, monographs, motion pictures. The contributors to the text, teacher's guide, and laboratory manual are a distinguished group of chemists from industrial, university, and high school backgrounds. Here are some of their present publications. We then try the materials in the high school. The first year trial involving 24 high schools and 1,300 students. The second year trial, 120 high schools and 13,000 students. Preliminary results from the trials are encouraging. As a result of the feedback, we undertake revisions of the materials. The editor of the text and teacher's guide is Professor George Pimentel of the University of California at Berkeley. The chem study course is intended for a regular high school chemistry class. It must suit the needs of the college directed or the science oriented student, but more important, it must be suitable for any student who would elect high school chemistry. The chem study course has two principal points of emphasis. The first concerns chemical principles. Chemical principles occupy a central position in the chem study course. 
With the benefit of certain important unifying concepts, ideas such as the, the mole concept, the periodic table, energy and reactions, reaction rates, these ideas permit the student to grasp a vast amount of chemical information. Instead of appearing as a large number of unrelated facts, he can see chemistry as a unified, coherent uh, picture. This then represents one of the points of emphasis. The second is perhaps more fundamental, more important, and that is that chemistry is an experimental science. The student is allowed to learn that chemistry is an experimental science through his own participation in the experimental work. He's frequently given the opportunity to uh, observe in the laboratory facts of nature and draw conclusions himself prior to any discussion of these facts in the text. In this way, he's given the opportunity to enjoy the excitement of discovery and uh, the intellectual stimulation of uh, the development of uh, a valid generalization. This, we feel, is a correct view of chemistry. Uh, and this is a way in which the student learns about chemistry through direct participation in the activities of chemistry as a science. We feel that this presentation of chemistry best prepares him to solve problems not just of chemistry, but of any problem where a knowledge of chemistry or science will aid him. Numerous questions arise, of course, concerning the details of the study. At one of the recent meetings of teachers using the materials, the following exchanges occurred. Margaret has done a very great deal of work in, in correlating both your results and the results of your students. A lot of it we've already reacted to. Have we missed anything, Margaret, that you would well, like I, to cover? Well, I wish I could say they were all completely self-explanatory. Unfortunately, there have been some titles left off. Mac, may I ask you a question, please? Many of us have found teachers' guides to be very helpful. What plan does Chem Study have for teachers' guides? First, we will have what we've called detail material. This will be written by one of our trial teachers from this year. It will be just as the title says. It will give detailed information about the sections of that chapter, the questions, the experiments, and how they fit together, how they fit with the past material, what student reactions can be anticipated. The background material will be generated by a university professor in close contact with the trial teacher, and this will expand on the chemical principles involved in the chapter and carry them somewhat beyond the text material. Fred, will a chem study student be handicapped in any way when he takes the college board exam? I assume you're referring to the college board chemistry achievement test. As with all the major curriculum studies, it's a matter of official college board policy that no student shall be penalized in the board's testing program as a result of participation in the chem study. As you know, interim measures have been taken through direct contact with college admissions officers to protect the students. In the long run, the results of special studies will determine the nature of the College Board Chemistry Achievement Test. George, how are we going to revise the treatment of chemical bonding? Well, Bob, I feel no major revision is indicated in this section. The treatment of the chemical bonding of gaseous molecules followed by the chemical bonding in condensed phases has some distinct advantages. So I expect the only revisions will be in the light of uh, difficulties uncovered in the classroom use. Now in this connection, I'm interested in uh, what the experience was in the classroom. Uh, for example, Saul, why don't you tell us uh, what your experience was in the New York classrooms? Well, the uh, discussions were satisfying and uh, convincing. Uh, it seems to me, though, as I think about it, that uh, we could have used some previously prepared models something along the lines of what Art Campbell used back at Claremont last summer. Uh, thank you. I, I wonder if there are any other suggestions. Gene? I think I would agree with uh, Saul that this section of the text, these three chapters, have gone very smoothly in the classroom, but we've spent an awful lot of time in the classroom uh, lecturing and discussing these uh, chapters and this topic, and we haven't had much uh, laboratory work uh, it would be worthwhile if we could have more experiments in this section so we could continue the experimental approach in chemical bonding. Fred, I'm interested in knowing a little bit about how your team at Michigan State is going to handle the problem of gathering lecture demonstrations for our course. Well, I have a chap 
who's helping me by the name of Bob Brando. He happens to be an alumnus of the sci Traveling Science Teacher Program. Together we've read the text and prepared a list of demonstrations which we think will be most helpful and useful in the program. These have been drawn from a series of sources such as the Journal of Chemical Education, the books on demonstrations by Arthur and Fowles, as well as a number of other sources. We're now in the process of trying these out, and after we have worked out a number of variations, we hope to find the best one and to prepare a set of foolproof instructions which we can turn over to the chem study. It is clear that any introductory course requires a text. Yet chemistry, as with sciences in general, leans heavily on laboratory work. We emphasize this in our title, Chemistry and Experimental Science. The preparation and revision of laboratory manuals requires constant communication between the teachers and the staff of the study. Here we have a conversation between Professor Lloyd Mom, editor of the laboratory manual from the University of Utah, and three of the teachers. What about the amounts of material specified in most of the chem study experiments this year? The amounts of the chemicals we used, we tried to make fit the experiment. For instance, when we used solutions, we used either a few milliliters or a few drops. And we found that when we were working with solid materials, uh, that a few grams to give us the kind of accuracy and precision that we wanted was desirable. How did your people come out with the uh, blank type of laboratory notebook which Chem Study is using? Well, I found that my students did develop the ability to organize their data and to express themselves in sentences rather than in a few words that fit the blanks. It was certainly an advantage to have them be able to turn in the carbon copies so we could see what they were doing while they retained the original. Not all questions lead to simple solutions for the study. This is particularly true in the search for the most effective method of presenting chemical concepts. Here is a group of us. Uh, Ed, we've uh, received some criticism on our presentation of uh, the chapter on oxidation reduction. Uh, Harry Sisler from University of Florida is helping us with a film on nitric acid, and you know oxidation and reduction comes in as a very important subject there. He's probably disturbed that our definition, limiting it to electron exchange, won't accommodate some of his reactions. That's exactly it. He feels it's too limited a definition uh, for the purposes, uh, for instance, of his discussion. Do you think well, we is need Is there some? a possibility that uh, we could solve this? One of the other problems we have of often only using one possible solution when there are several alternative points of view, and here we can develop both the oxidation reduction number and, and the electron loss and gain. If well, we, we did that sort of thing in acids and bases yes. in that mm -hmm. chapter. Well, this would allow a, a development of the two along quite parallel lines. And make a, quite a point of the fact that there are two approaches and uh, contrast them. Is that your idea? Well, it would certainly seem possible because you have, in one case, electrons, in the other case, protons possibly lost and gained. The results of such discussions are reflected both in writing the text and producing the films. All films are under the supervision of David Ridgway, with close cooperation between chem study staff and the studio on scientific and production problems. What's, what's this for? Well, that's just to keep the lights off these stopcocks. You see, although this is high temperature grease, we prefer not to take a chance that oh, it warms up and flows. So the stopcocks won't leak. During, during the scene, we won't have oh, to Oh, no. No, this is just while we're uh, doing these preliminary activities. I see. Then, when I crimp the, the tube, the pump is off, but the entire system is connected. And at that point, you drop this and warm this, and bromine then will be introduced to the entire system at the same pressure. Okay. How do students of different ability perform in the chem study course? In order to find out, we have had each student take the SCAT test. The results of the test are given on this chart. On the right-hand side, we have the performance of a typical group of high school students in the, in the United States on SCAT tests. In the left-hand chart, the performance of the chem study students in one year of the trial. It is clear that almost all of our students are well above the national median. On the other hand, we have had groups in the lower section, as you can see. The middle bar on the chart represents the central 50% of the class. The upper and lower lines represent the next 20% above and the next 20% below the middle group. The uppermost 5% and the lowermost 5% are not shown on the chart. In addition, we have had classes where the median on the chem study tests, as shown by the aptitude, was in the 31st percentile nationally. 
Of course, we have had more groups in which the median has been in the 95th percentile nationally. And yet, since many schools have used our materials on all students in their courses taking chemistry, we have a good representation of how an average student can respond to chem study materials. There is as yet no evidence that they have any more difficulty with our course than they would with a conventional chemistry course. Chemistry can be taught in many ways. It can be taught as CBA is doing it with emphasis on chemical bonds. It can be done as chem study is doing it. It can be done as many local groups are doing it. Regardless of how it is done, different things are noticed. Let us, for example, compare the correlation between the performance on our own tests with the performance on SCAT tests as shown in this chart. Here we have two representations, the performance on our first test and the performance on our fourth test. The first test, you will notice there are four columns on the chart. The left-hand column represents those who on the SCAT test were in the upper 90th percentile. The next column, those between the 90th and 75th percentile. The third column, those below the 75th percentile on SCAT test. The final column, the total group. We, sh we see here then that those who did quite well on the SCAT test are spread out considerably on the chem study test. Those who were in the middle on the SCAT test are somewhat lower. And those who were very low on the SCAT test are lower still. Yet notice the large degree of overlap between the three groups. This means there is a relatively small correlation between performance on SCAT test and performance on chem study tests. Furthermore, if we now compare the last chem study test with the first, we see the correlation is even worse. There is a very large overlap between those who presumably had low aptitude and those of highest aptitude, as represented by their performance on our own test. The medians are still in the expected order, but the overlap has become quite remarkable. Indeed, roughly 10% of the students in the lowest group are now above the median of those who should have been in the highest group based on their presumed aptitude. We feel that an experimental approach and an approach which emphasizes the use of concepts by the students, concepts which they have reached primarily from observing and doing experiments themselves, has real merit. It is this emphasis on the experimental approach by the student in the laboratory and by developing his own concepts and using them that is the basis of the chem study course.